never seen the wonder glimmer of first sight. The eyes begin to open, blindness meets the light. It have so say.
Well, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Ignite Wednesday night. We're so glad that you're here with us tonight, whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you are streaming online through Facebook. We appreciate you joining us tonight. I do have a couple scriptures I'm going to open with tonight. It's a little bit different than what we normally do, uh, but I thought it very appropriate. If you didn't know, the song that I opened with tonight is called Wonder, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about tonight. And in 1 Chronicles 16, 27, it says, Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. And the book of Job, everybody's favorite book, right? The book of Job. Book of Job 4010, and I've used this in a song that I actually wrote uh, a few years ago. It says, adorn yourself with majesty and dignity. Clothe yourself with glory and splendor. And that rolls right into Psalm 21. It says, his glory is great through your salvation. His glory is great through your salvation. Splendor and majesty you bestow upon him. We are reflections of Christ in all that we do and all that we say. And man, we see God in everything. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about a trip I recently took. Um, going to have some fun with that. Talk to these uh, wonderful ladies up here. See if they have any uh, similar experiences that they're willing to share. And uh, we're just going to have a good time in worship tonight. So if you're here in the sanctuary with us, won't you stand? If you're at home, you can stand in your living room too. Hopefully you're streaming on your, your television. Uh, we'll have some lyrics up here for you. And you can sing right along with us. We're going to start with a song tonight called Awesome is the Lord Most High. All right, come on now. Fabulous song. Just like it is, right? Great are you, Lord, your mighty and strength. You are faithful.
tonight. Man, that, the song has some really good lyrics to it. We've sang that song probably 100,000 times in the course of the past uh, 14 years since it was released. And we sing it at church on Sundays. We sing it here on Wednesdays. Um, sometimes it gets to be routine. Sometimes we fall into a rut. And, oh, we're going to sing that song again. And there it is. And we really don't think about what it is we're singing. But some lyrics jumped out at me in that song as we're singing, raise your hands, all you nations, shout to God, all creation. How awesome is the Lord most high. Here's the part that we, we overlook sometimes. We will praise you together for now and forever. It doesn't say we'll praise you when things are going super good. It doesn't say we'll praise you when, like, we win the lottery, but we're not going to praise you when things aren't so great or, you know, when finances are a little bit tough. It says we'll praise you now and forever. And we, we overlook that sometimes. Now and in the storm. Now and in right the storm. Right in the storm, Amen. in the middle of it. If you haven't watched the news lately, um, good for you. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> it's mildly depressing. <laughs> um, if you haven't watched the news lately, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, we definitely need to be praying for the country of Lebanon uh, right now as there was a, a massive explosion there yesterday, still investigating the cause of it. We're not sure if it was intentional and if it was an accident or or what it was, regardless, it was a massive loss of life there and just devastation on a, on a scene or on a scale that can be seen from outer space. I just was looking at some satellite before and after pictures, and there's now a harbor where there wasn't a harbor before uh, from this explosion. So we definitely need to continue to pray for them, um, regardless of what the majority uh, faith is in that nation. Uh, God still loves each and every person there. God still wants to have a relationship with them just like he has with us. So we, we need to pray for the people for their suffering. We need to pray for God to be recognized there, uh, to be recognized as the true God there, and and to be uh, repentant for that country uh, as well. So praying for Lebanon is important. Obviously, the whole COVID thing is still going on as we creep ever so slowly towards the opening of school or the not opening of school, depending on which district you're in, uh, or which state you're in, or which locality you're in, or maybe your school hasn't decided yet, um, which is, a, is an awesome opportunity to, uh, to explore options. So we want to keep our, our teachers covered in prayer. We want to keep our students covered in prayer. All those athletes that are out there thinking, man, we're going to have an awesome season this year, maybe, or man, we're going to have an awesome time with marching band this year, maybe. Um, so there's a lot of stress and frustration and, and, and just uncertainty in the world right now. Uh, so let's continue to pray for them. Um, we know, though, that through it all, we can trust on our Father. We can trust in his word. We can trust in the truth that he reveals to us when we pray to him. We can trust what he says in his book. It is the truth. His grace is more than sufficient for each and every one of us. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner. You lead us by still waters into mercy, and nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people. Remember your children. Your grace is enough. Your grace is 
God is the God of love and mercy and kindness. God is the creator God. He is the one who set the world into motion. He's the one that gives us the breath we breathe today. And we have so much to be thankful for, even in the midst, as Susan said, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the crazy chaos of this world, we have so much to be thankful for because God is the one who sets it all in motion for us. Stronger, the King of Glory, oh, the King of all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of Glory, oh, the King of all kings. Come on, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, and oh, oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, oh, the King of all kings. Who rules the nation with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, oh, the King of all kings. This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, 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 oh Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me
you've done for me. And whoa, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. And leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. There's Jesus that word breath. again. I'm telling you. Wonder. There is a theme. And no, right. it, it honestly wasn't planned out. I picked songs. We practiced last night. Patty said, hey, why don't, we, why don't we talk about wonder since you just went out west? And I can say that from talking to folks, I'm not sure about Greg. I know that the rest of us have all been out west. Have you been out west, Greg? You lived out west. Well, that's oh. even better. Where did you live, Greg? Colorado. Colorado. All right. Oh. So Greg knows oh. about the west. Um, <laughs> I had been out west, but it had been many years ago, back in like 84 uh, when we drove out west, I was, I was eight, um, so I was little, but I remember a lot of it. And uh, a couple of years ago, it was '84, so you can do the math. You're a math teacher; it's fine. Um, just remember, you were my youth group leader. So, <laughs> so many years ago, I went out west, and I've I've been not stuck here in Ohio, but I've been stuck here in Ohio for a while. I hadn't had a vacation in like five years, um, which for some people, you're like, five years, that's all? Yeah, it's fine. Um, I, I like to travel. Traveling is kind of my thing. And, and so it's been a while since my family has gotten to take a vacation. We went and we did a 4,500-mile road trip. And there were six of us in one vehicle, two teenagers. It went well. It went surprisingly well. I was, I was blessed that it went as well as it did. Um, we didn't have any catastrophic meltdowns. Nobody, nobody threatened to turn the car around or anything else. Um, it was awesome. It was my car. I was driving. It was fine. Um, but that line, it leaves us breathless and on wonder. If you've never been to the mountains, particularly the Rocky Mountains, it leaves you breathless in awe and wonder. I was sitting literally on top of Pikes Peak, 14,100 feet in the air, which is higher than some airplanes fly. And I have pictures to prove it. My feet were literally dangling off the cliff face at 14,000 feet in the air. And then it snowed. It, we were sitting there, and the wind kicked up, and the snowstorm started in the middle of July um, with my feet dangling off a cliff 14,000 feet in the air. There is nothing that you can imagine like that can compare to that, that view and that, but like, see, that's, that's earth and, and heaven is so much better than that. Like we see the most beautiful things. I sent or showed Patty some pictures yesterday of uh, some waterfalls and, and some lakes and some mountains. She's like, oh, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. I'm like, it, it was amazing. It was, it left me breathless sometimes and all in wonder. Um, but then like we think about that and that's not even a fraction of what we'll get to see in heaven. That's not, I mean, God did that with, like, probably a second thought. He's like, eh, I'm going to put something over there. It's good. Because um, what he creates is good, and I would agree that, that what he creates is good, and it was amazing. Um, and, and hopefully if you tune in Sunday, uh, there might be some pictures uh, as some backgrounds here for our, our lyrics for our songs on Sunday that I took um, so you can see what I'm talking about. Patty, what is your favorite thing that you've ever experienced in, in nature, in God's creation? What is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Okay, well, of course, my, my mind takes me back to um, my husband and I did the same trip that Ross did a couple years ago, and we traveled out west, but I'm going to just bring it close to home for a second, okay, because you might understand this if you're a, a female out there who's ever had a baby. I will say that is the most mm. precious time I have ever had the day that they handed me mm. my child, <laughs> and to know that that's my child. Um, that's probably number one. Well, it's better be number one, <laughs> it, two, it and three be. <laughs> because I have three three boys. And then the rest of those are grandchildren births. Uh, that is pretty awesome, too. But Literal creation. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. were yeah. literal creation. All right. What about you, Susan? You can't yeah. use her answer. <laughs> nope. Know. Nope. She went first. Stop making her go first because <laughs> that was mine. But I agree. Um, having a child is the most amazing awe and wonder like ah but um we have been out west and i would agree also the rocky mountains are unbelievable don't even compare to the smoky mountains i'm sorry <laughs> they're pretty if you're from the carolinas they're, we apologize I'm sorry, they're pretty <laughs> <laughs> okay so did you guys see zion national park 
Okay, that I, I, I'm telling. I've seen the Grand Canyon, and it is grand. It's awesome, but Zion National Park. Oh my! Appropriately you, it, named. You, you, it is. <laughs> it's, it's just something to behold. I know we, we were talking about earlier, and I said, you know, why why we Americans think that we need to pack our bags, board a plane, and travel overseas to see something great in another country? We don't even realize what's right here in our midst. Yes. Carol, what about you? What's your favorite place? Okay, so we've used childbirth and we've used out west. <laughs> so I'll go a different direction. And um, I took a Scandinavian cruise and the sunset over the ocean was like, I mean, we have beautiful sunsets even here in Fredericktown. But this was something I'd like never seen before, how, how beautiful it was. All right, that's, that's right up there on my list as well I, when I was in Kenya. Um, seeing the sunset over the uh, over the, the countryside there in Kenya and the sunrise um, over the Indian Ocean to the east it was absolutely amazing. Um, I've been fortunate to travel the world and to see some things, um, but man, there's just something about those mountains and the canyons and the rivers and, and all that out west. If you've not left Ohio when it is safe to do so, and yes, every state we went through was a safer COVID state than Ohio. Uh, we, we planned our route accordingly. Um, we, we took our temperatures every morning uh, as we were all crowding back into the, uh, the SUV and we were safe about our trip. Tried to avoid people as much as we could. That was the point of going west. Um, but if you have the opportunity to travel out west, man, take it. It is spectacular. It is breathtaking and it leaves you in awe of God's creation. Know the beginning of this next song, Mirage. Talks about mountains. <laughs> Did we plan that? Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. How cool is that, right? I mean, all of these songs were chosen, and then we came up with the topic of wonder, not even putting the two together, but they're all right in front of us. That's a wonder in itself. Here we go. So let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, good. You are 
joys. He's experienced them all. He's the creator for each and every one of us. So let's sing that chorus again tonight, because he is good. He is so, so good. And you are good. You're good.
we kind of have themes and we kind of have things we like to talk about and I'm going to go ahead and ruin the surprise for next week because they didn't know what was, I didn't know what was going on so what I want you to do for next week I want you to think about it now and our theme next week is going to be lies that the devil has told us lies that the devil has told us each and one individually has their own stories so between now and next week whether you're watching at home whether you're here in the sanctuary I want you to think about a specific lie that the devil has told you. And there'll be a good time next week online where you can, you can type that into our comment section. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, maybe delve into it just a little bit more than we normally do. Because there's so many things that the devil whispers in our ear that cause us to walk just a little farther from God. Just a, just a doubt, just a little bit more. Just a question that God loves us and he truly does. Just to question his forgiveness, those sorts of things. So think about that between now and then. That's kind of a heavy topic. But boy, the devil is lying to a lot of people right now. The devil is whispering in our ears. He's doing his very best to 
cause dysfunction in our world right now, and he's doing a great job of it. So between now and then, I want you to think about that. I'm going to ask Patty to close us in a prayer tonight. And uh, and just give us a blessing as we leave this place. So before you do that, before I do that, um, Ross actually posted the question, although he doesn't know it. (laughs) Every time you see something on here, it's me posting, but it comes across as Ross. (laughs) So if I goof up, it's Ross's fault (laughs) because his name's attached to it. And I said, from Ross, me, church, how about you? Your most amazing experience ever. Please post. And one of our own, Steph, who's up in the uh, the, um, sound booth, says... The day she accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior. Now I thought that was great. Amen. And Carol McRoy gives a, a little bit about the West and uh, and uh, Kauai. So in Hawaii, yeah. and she also then said the birth of their three kids. Of course. Did you I know, said. Patty, that if you go far enough west, you actually come east? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the the. How much, what is that scripture, Richard, that, that he loves us as far as the east is from the west? Or for, what is that? Yeah, something. Yeah. And you think about well, east and west. That that's never. It never, never ends. It yep. never, it was so sad. It's really cool. So I got to tell you, um, sometimes words just flash in my head, and the word here flashed in my head for, uh, I'm going to tell you about it, and then we're going to close in prayer. Um, this last one, where we sang the bridge, there's no shadow, there's no shadow, you won't light up. So think about all those dark places that you're walking into. Middle of the night, you're getting up, and it, he has that power. He'll light it up for you. But think about the shadows of our lives, not using the restroom in the middle of the night, but actually the shadows of your life, the the things that are are cumbersome and fearful. And and there is not one of those that he can't wipe away. Not one. Not one. Let everything that was hidden in darkness be brought into the light. Because when the light is on, the darkness has no option but to flee. Yes? Right? But look at the second part. It says, there's no mountain you won't climb up coming after me. Think of the highest mountains in the whole world. I mean, humans are trying to get to the top, but they can't. But God won't stop. He's relentless. He's relentless in searching for you. There's no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down. There's some pretty good Christian songs out there right now about um, lies. And I'll bring some of those next week. So Ross gives me permission. We'll uh, give you some titles that you can listen to, um, songs about lies. Um, I'll bring him anyway. I don't have to have his permission. <laughs> Look at him laughing. Have his iPad. Yeah, I, I, I have the iPad. I can do anything I want. Yeah. Anyway, um, the word that came to me during this last song is the word pursue. I had somebody come to me one time, a young friend, and said, God's just not pursuing me anymore. I think he's just finished. He's given up on me. And I, as I read this bridge, I go, oh, no. The word pursue never stops. So, no matter where you are, if you are on the best walk you've had with your journey to, with Christ, you know, that's great. But sometimes our journeys take a, take a path where they are dark and where fear trickles in. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is the trick of the enemy. And Ross just said it's called a lie. And Satan will have you believe that there is no way out of this, that there is nothing that you're going to be able to do and God is going to forget all about this because he doesn't have time to waste on you or your story. That is such a lie. I can't wait to talk about this next week because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I know, I know I've heard those lies before. Everybody up here on this platform and everybody in in our group right tonight can say the same thing. S, have you heard the lies? You're not good enough. You can't make it through this. God doesn't care enough about you. He's busy with the other 99. That's not what the song just says. The song says he will leave the 99 to go and find that one lost soul. And he will bring them back and we will rejoice because they are a part of the flock again. So I'm going to tell you the word pursue. It's in my head. It flash, flash, flash. And there's a reason because you need to know that. There is hope with Christ. There is no other, other term that I can use. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. The darkest of days are only dark for a little bit because where he sheds that light, the darkness has to flee. So we will finish up tonight as um, we pray blessings over you. And we will see you again next week. Please come and join us in worship. Father God, we thank you. And as sure as I am standing here right now, the word pursue is flashing in front of my eyes.
because you're trying to tell us that you never, 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 never give up on us. Your desire is that no man shall perish, but everyone come to Christ. And Father God, that's what we pray tonight. We pray a blessing over our audience that is in-house and those who are worshiping online. And Father, for the folks who are going to be looking at this recording later on, we pray over them as well. There's a message here, and I can feel it in my bones. I know it. I just know it. You are telling us this isn't over. This battle is yours, and you are fighting for us. We just need to come to you, and we need to trust that you are going to take care of whatever battle it is we're going through, but that you know best, even when we want the answers right now, here, today, be done and over with. Sometimes you say, ah, we're not quite yet. Father, remind us that gentle whisper of yours that you are still pursuing us, even when we think that's not happening. We thank you, Father. We praise you. I just want to lift up all those folks who are in view of this tonight. We just want to be recklessly in love with you. And it's because your son Jesus paid the ultimate price, the price of his life to save ours. What a crazy thing to do. But that's who you are. You are a great God. And you love us immensely. So, Father, we are going to close with this chorus one, one last time. But we just thank you, praise you. We give you all the glory in this, your name, your son's name, Jesus. So, so holy and precious. Here we go. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. He won't. Coming after He's going to keep on coming because he is in pursuit of you. Come on. There's no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down. Coming after no shadow, he will, he lights up. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Come on, here we go, no wall. There's no wall you won't kick down, die you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, Your Son, our Savior. Amen. Have a wonderful Good night, everybody. Week. We'll see you next week.